Welcome to another episode of Extreme Reloading. And today we're really changing gears. We're going to stop talking about and loading pistol rounds like the 9mm Luger and the 45 ACP that we've been doing previously. And as I said, really switch gears uh, and now go back to loading rifle rounds like the 308 Winchester. Now our focus this season is what I'm calling extreme bullets. And the extreme rifle bullet I've been wanting to try for quite some time is this Sierra tipped Game King that they call the Game Changer. This is a 308 caliber bullet in 165 grain weight. This of course is not a match bullet. It's not a target bullet, although it can be used in that way, uh, it's really designed to be a hunting round. And whenever I think about hunting bullets and hunting uh, rounds, my mind always gravitates toward Barnes bullets. Now I've been shooting Barnes bullets since I was a wee nipper, as they say. And uh, I can recall years and years ago, when I am when I was in my teens, pulling a bullet out of some dirt, and that bullet was a Barnes bullet, and I was so impressed when I weighed that bullet on my reloading scale that that 160 grain 7 millimeter mag bullet was still 160 grains, even after it went through that very coarse uh, sand. I did that test after killing a white-tailed deer and finding that my bullet, which was a Hornady spire point, that that bullet had fragmented inside the deer, and that really bothered me. So I wanted to get uh, and start using a more reliable bullet, and what I found is that these Barnes bullets are really fantastically reliable bullet and they have been my bullet of choice whenever I'm dealing with um, hunting rounds. This also is a 165 grain bullet. This, as you can see, is Barnes tipped triple shock bullet. And in many, many ways, it's very similar to the Sierra in dimensions. However, this is a solid copper bullet, save for the tip whereas this Sierra Game Changer is more of a traditional bullet with a lead core. But before loading any of these, I've got to prepare some brass. And another thing I've been wanting to do for quite some time is to try out some of this Atlas Development Group, or ADG, brass. Now, what is so special about ADG brass? What makes it different? What makes it worthwhile? Well, what makes it so different is, number one, this brass is crafted or designed to have as uniform as possible case volume. The weight of the case may vary, uh, so on and so forth, but ADG says that these are extremely consistent case volumes. In fact, so much so that they recommend that you don't resize these cases, you don't full length resize these cases, and so I'm not going to. That's kind of good. It saves me a few steps. Essentially, these are ready to be loaded, but after talking to AG, uh, ADG, they did note that they do not chamfer the mouths, which I can tell by looking at these, and I do want to do that. Plus, if you watched our previous episode a while back on what we called primer mania, I am going to spend some time uniforming these primer pockets, and that was demonstrated to be an extremely effective and useful or worthwhile step. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do those two steps, and of interest, that is all going to happen on my RCBS case prep station. So we'll be shifting over to it in just a little bit. 
Once I finish my work on the case prep station, I'm going to weigh and sort these brass. And I know we already said that these brass cases might have slightly different case weights. I don't really know that, but I've read that that might be the instance. I'm still going to sort them because it certainly won't hurt to do that. Plus, I'm interested in how different they really are and taking a look at their uh, variability is going to be helpful to me. So we're going to go over here to the case prep station and get to work. By the way, I'm using a standard chamfer here. I do have another type of chamfering tool which is essentially designed for ELD type bullets, extreme low drag, those kind of long bullets. And there's sometimes the recommendation to use a little bit different chamfering angle. But uh, I'm going to stick with the, my standard chamfer on this. And right now it's looking pretty nice. Another thing that I'm going to be doing to prepare these primer pockets is to uniform the flash holes. Again, if you're interested in the results of our primer mania experiment, we will be putting the link to that video in the description. And this was another one of those little steps that were proven to be very useful in helping to craft very consistent brass and very consistent ammunition. Well I'm going to continue with 49 more of these cases and then we're going to head in, weigh and sort these things. So I've finished the case sorting of all this ADG brass and after looking over the statistics and the variation, the dispersion of those case weights along the mean, let me say that I'm pretty impressed so far with this ADG brass. It is really some tight and consistent brass. So when I weigh my brass, I first set up and calibrate my reloading scale. And then I kind of clear the dining room table and I put on along it some uh, painter's tape, you know, the green or blue painter's tape. And then I weigh a couple cases, three, four, or five cases to get a feel for the average, let's just say, weight of those cases. And whatever that general average is, that becomes kind of the center point of the, uh, of the weights that I put on that tape. And then I simply weigh one case, put it in the appropriate place along the tape, weigh the second one, the third, all the way until I have completed, in this case, all 50 cases. And that's kind of an interesting way to do it because you can then visualize the distribution of those case weights almost like you're looking at a live histogram. But then I take all of that data and I enter it into an Excel spreadsheet and I complete some additional statistical analysis on that or at least some descriptive statistics and I graph that data. And so what we see here is across 50 cases the weight of those cases varied only by 1.3 grains. We see sort of a bell-shaped curve emerging uh, that might be slightly skewed to the left. It's interesting though that the mean and the median are both identical in value and that's a very good sign that we're looking at some pretty normally distributed uh, case weights. And since I've been following this, essentially, this identical procedure for quite a number of years, I was able to go back into my reloading records and find case weight data for Lapua, Norma, and Hornady brass. And this is all 308 Winchester brass. Now, Lapua brass is, as far as I'm concerned, that's the, that's the cat's meow. That's the creme de la creme. That's the epitome of brass cases as far as I'm concerned. But look at what 
the ADG brass and how it stacks up against it. While the ADG brass is slightly heavier by just a grain, and that was actually anticipated, remember ADG brass uh, is supposed to be a little bit heavier brass, but compared to the Lapua brass, it is even more consistent. Note that the standard deviation is fairly lower. And in this comparison, we're really comparing the exact same number of cases, 50 versus 49. Okay, essentially the exact same thing. We see that Norma, and by the way, Norma makes the brass for Nossler, not Nossler brass as I understand it. Um, and so this could be Norma slash Nossler brass. That is the lightest brass that we have, that I've been working with in the past. And in many respects doesn't really stack up against Lapua or against the ADG brass that we're working with now. The Hornady brass is kind of interesting. And so I should point out that both the Hornady and Norma brass has the smallest sample size. So we may not have quite as much confidence about this brass as we do about the ADG and Lapua brass. But looking at the Hornady brass, it is quite heavy. And I noted that a long time ago. I noticed it's quite heavy, kind of thick brass. And the thicker and heavier brass suggests or lets us know that the case capacity for that same 308 Winchester is probably going to be smaller in the Hornady brass than it is in, for instance, the Norma brass, which is the lightest and thinnest of brass. So you might think then, well, since I'm loading with Lapua brass right now and it's very, very similar to ADG brass, maybe I don't need to work the load up from scratch when I'm using ADG brass. That's not really a good um, assumption to make though. Recall that whenever we change components in our reloading process, we really need to work things up once again. And something so critical as the brass that you're using, when you're changing from one brand to another, it is a good idea to work up the load once again. Or in my case, it's a brand new load anyway with these 165 grain bullets, and so I had to work up the load no matter what. So I sorted this ADG brass, and every bag of brass that I now have varies only by a tenth or two tenths of a grain. So that is some really consistent stuff that I've set aside. I have then taken the heaviest subset of that brass and I have worked up a number of loads with that. And in all cases I'm using Reloader 15 powder and I'm incrementing that powder charge by half grain increments. That's normally my first step in the process and I'm going to fire those things over the chronograph and I'm going to watch those velocities and effectively graph the velocity curve. Then I'm going to come back and study that velocity curve and I'm going to then load another batch of workup rounds but this is going to be done in two-tenths of a grain increments and what I'm doing there is I'm searching for the optimal charge weight or OCW. We've got some other nice videos out there describing optimal charge weight in the entire process so you'll be able to find a link to those videos in the description below. And following the OCW workup we will then be able to choose the one load that I think is going to give us the best performance from these Sierra Game Changers. I'll then load up a number of Sierra Game Changers as well as those Barnes tipped triple shock bullets. And we're going to put both of those head to head in one of our PAC comparison tests. PAC, by the way, is our precision, accuracy, and consistency test. And so in our next episode, we're going to be heading out to the range a couple of times. Initial workup with half grain increments and the workup using optimal charge weight or OCW. I hope you're able to tune in. Thanks for watching.